Hello you dudes, uh, we're going to do a simple review today. I'm going to show you my unboxing of a really cool lens that I just got. It's the 30mm f1.4 EXDC Sigma lens. Um, it runs like 300 bucks on Amazon. It's a lot of cash if you're poor, but uh, it seems like a really, really cool lens. So we're going to, I'm going to give you my limited knowledge of it and we're going to unbox it and I'm going to show you some test footage in daytime situations so you can see how much depth of field you can have. Um, before you get too much light and uh, low light situations and I'm going to attempt to show you how wide it actually is by filming various parts of my house. So, are you ready? So we're going to grab it, open it up and here's the warranty bullshit and here's the manual, nobody ever reads that. Uh, this is like a sticker. We could put some some Japanese like symbols and some French symbols on our guitar case. Uh, let's see. Uh, I was trying to be funny, that wasn't very funny. Here's an empty box, right? Okay, empty boxes are pretty cool. You could look through there, right? You could go use this like during an eclipse or something. Actually, don't do that. Anyway, this is the boringest review ever. Okay, uh, so here's like a little case and um, we're gonna open it up and the lens is inside and that's it. So, it apparently comes with a little little bag or a case or something that you can, you can use, right? Okay, anyway. This is a foam pad. You can sit on this if you have hemorrhoids, probably. That's what I think. Um, so, and here's the actual lens. Hopefully I won't drop it as I'm looking through. Yeah, so it uh, looks like it looks like it's supposed to look. This is how it looked in the picture on Amazon. There's the back. You're not supposed to open that up very much so that dust doesn't get in. And uh, here's the front. Oops, I forgot to buy a UV filter. That's total crap. Okay, I'll buy a UV filter later. You're supposed to get, you know, something to protect the lens, right? Because if dust goes on that, or if it scratches, then you waste all your money, but if you have a little protector, right? Okay, anyway. Worst review ever. Worst unboxing ever. Okay, so here's a little thing, right? A uh, little, 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 little freaking flower petal lens hood, and that's supposed to help you block out the uh, sun from, I guess, glaring into your lens. Okay. So that's the unboxing. <laughs> Worst unboxing ever. I even had a razor. I didn't use it. God damn. Okay, so here it is. Um, this is the lens. And um, right off the bat, I can tell that it's a little bit heavier and uh, more sturdy, more solid than uh, my 50 millimeter cheapy, you know, $100 lens that a lot of you guys have. Let me get it over here um, on my T2i. See, this is like... The lens that everybody buys for their first lens, it's like 100 bucks, it's 50 millimeters, goes to 1.8, right? Everybody gets it because it's so cheap and it's so awesome. So here's my Canon T2i and um, it, notice that it's a little bit bigger because I have a battery grip, so keep that in mind for size comparison. Um, this is how the lens looks against the camera and the other lens. It's just slightly bigger, but it's a lot heavier and it feels a lot more solid. Although I still wouldn't drop it. but. Um, so it, uh, it's got autofocus and manual focus, which is good, and um, the focus ring seems to be a lot easier to manipulate than some other lenses, especially the one that I just showed you. Um, I don't know if you can see right here, but it's like a big, thick ring, you know, and it goes real slow, as opposed to the other one, which is kind of like, you know. It also comes with a hood, right? Um, the reason you want a hood is so you can put it on the top of your lens and it helps block out the sun rays coming in from the side or, you know, direct light, uh, like a light coming directly into the lens. That has a tendency to cause lens flare and other effects. Sometimes that's desirable, sometimes you want to block it out. So you have this that you can take on and off anytime you want. And so to talk a little bit about the technical specifications, um, 30 millimeters uh, is kind of wide, right? Uh, not super wide, not fisheye or anything like that. But one thing that crop sensor camera users always have as a problem is the crop factor, right? You buy, a, uh, let's say for instance, you buy a 50 millimeter lens like this one over here, and this lens, it'll fit on the Canon T2i, but it's really made for the full, you know, sensor cameras like the, I don't know, the 5D or something. And as a consequence, since this camera has a smaller sensor, you have to multiply the, the millimeters by 1.6 or something like that. So it's, it's the crop factor. So, sorry, let's see, uh, you do 50 millimeters times 1.6 
and that's 80. So this 50 millimeter lens is basically an 80 millimeter lens on my particular camera because it has the crop sensor, which is basically most of the cameras that the average uh, person buys, especially if they're entering for the first time uh, into DSLR video or, or photos. Um, I think the 5D is the full frame sensor, I'm not sure, but uh, you know, the more expensive ones are the full frame that won't make you change the, the millimeters, the angle um, of the lens. But anyway, so I was worried about that and uh, you know, because this, I wanted a wide lens that I could use in my room and 30 millimeters sounds good, but after you multiply it by 1.6, that can end up being 30 times 1.6, 480, <laughs> hold on, 48. So I was worried uh, at first that it was going to be a 48 millimeter lens, which is not bad. That's kind of good, right? But I wanted something wider. I didn't want something that was like a human vision, you know, because 35 millimeters is around the regular, you know, area of what we see with our eyes, I guess. That's what I heard anyway. So then what I figured out uh, from the description on Amazon or, or some research that I was doing, I forgot, um, is one of these letters, I don't remember which one, it's either the EX or the DC, so it's 30 millimeter Sigma 1.4 EX DC, I forget which one of those it is or if it's both, but that means it's made for crop sensor cameras, which means if I eventually upgrade to a, a 5D or a 1D or something, then I won't be able to use this lens on it because um, the lens is designed for the crop sensor cameras. I'll get, I'll get, I guess, like some kind of a vignette or something around the edges. Some, something will go wrong. I saw an example, but um, as long as I have a crop sensor camera, which I think is probably going to be for a long time because I'm not a super serious film person, um, I will be able to use this. And what that means in terms of the benefit <laughs> is that I don't have to multiply the 30 millimeters by the crop factor. So I don't have to multiply 30 millimeters by 1.6 to get a 48 millimeter uh, viewing angle. Uh, so, so 30 is 30. 30 stays 30 on this because it's made for the crop sensor camera. So you can pretty much be rest assured that you have a 30 millimeter lens and it will actually look like a 30 millimeter lens. So yeah, not much to this lens except for the fact that it's awesome, it's heavier, it's got 30 millimeters uh, as the viewing angle, which won't change on your crop sensor camera, and it's got a nice focus ring, and it actually, oh, it actually shows you, I don't even know what this is, shows you something, probably the feet away from you that it's focusing, I don't know uh, if you can see it, yeah, that's totally feet and meters, isn't it? There's a little display right here. Um, as you turn the focus ring, then the numbers change and that shows you how many feet away from you uh, that you're focusing. Um, I think that's that's cool, like if you're going to calculate everything in advance, but I don't know, for me, I just got Magic Lantern on my camera uh, and, and I'll just focus it by hand anyway, you know, until it looks sharp, I don't know, you can zoom in. But this is probably pretty good if, you, if you're not sure if you need to calculate things a little bit more or whatever. So yeah, autofocus, manual focus. Let's try it out on the actual camera. All right, so now we're on the actual Sigma lens. Um, this is where I was just filming. That's the tripod. And that right there is the chair. And it's kind of smooth to focus. It feels a lot easier. Um, I'm definitely, I don't have to put my hand on the front of the lens like with some of the other uh, lenses uh, in, in order to focus. The focus ring is very convenient. And I've got the ISO all the way down to 100 right now. And you might be surprised to know that, look at how bright it looks outside, right? This is seriously not bright outside. This is, this is just before sundown. This, I don't know if you can, you can't even see the shadows. It's like so bright. Hold on, let me go outside here. Look at this. I don't know if you can tell by the shadows because it's so bright. I have the ISO down all the way and you still can't even see the wall because it's so blown out. Basically, um... Yeah, literally we're like, I think maybe 45 minutes away from sundown, and it's this bright. Let me change the aperture so you can see a little bit better. Um, let's see, so now, so that was 1.4 aperture. Now, now we're all the way down to 2.8 aperture, which is what a lot of the lens have, uh, what a lot of the lenses have. Uh, I chose the 1.4 because I wanted to shoot in low light situations. There's my cute little doggy. He's like, how come I can't come outside too? I want a pee pee outside treat. Well, not right now, punk. Um, so yeah, 
you can see by the shadows that uh, the sun is already down, it's past the house, it's about to disappear. See the steep angle of the shadows, right? So the sun's like up here only, and it's gonna go pretty soon. So it is still so bright that I had to turn the aperture down to 2.8 and the ISO is down to 100, and it still looks like this. And um, let's see if we can go back inside and get a shot of my face so you can see how cool it makes people look with the 1.4 aperture. Oh, how about this? Let's do Fred. Come on, Fred. Come on outside here, sweetie. Hey, you're gonna be my subject right now, punk. Come on. Come up here. Come up here, sweetie. Nope, what are you doing? Nope, okay. All right, stay right there. Stay right there. No, 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 no. Don't, don't go closer, please. No, stay right there. Stay right there. Okay, you stay right there. All right, so let's see. Let's get a focus on his face. Okay, it appears to be focusing on his face. I am literally one foot away from this little guy. And I'm still at 2.8. Let me see if I can do more. Oh my gosh. Still way too bright to do this outside. So one thing you guys want to keep in mind is if you expect to use this outside in any kind of daylight, you need a neutral density filter, a neutral density filter, an ND filter, to reduce the light coming in the lens. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to go all the way up to f1.4. You're going to have to stick somewhere else and not get as much depth of field or a shallowness of depth of field. So let's go inside, sweetie. My love. Okay, we've moved back inside, and uh, I'm forcing my poor little baby boy to just stand there while I talk in, in, into a, a device. And he's like, "You're, you're, what? What are the noises coming out of that thing? It's Satan!" No, no, sweetie. All right, he's gonna sit by my knee. Um, so I'm focusing on him. The distance between the camera and his head is about a foot again. Um, before it was about two feet or something like that. So. This is how close you can get to somebody and still see their whole little dog face. His face is like the fourth, a fourth the size of a human's face, I guess. I'll probably do this facing back at myself. But um, so I'm back inside the house and the ISO is at. What's the ISO at? Mm, oh, it was at 640, 640 ISO, and f stop 1.4. And this is just a few moments after uh, the previous scene in which it was too bright outside, but the sun is basically about to go down. So it's so bright that you can use it indoors right before the sun goes down um, at f1.4. And where are you going? Freaking punk! I need you. Get over here. Hey, hi, sweetie. Could you stay right there? Stay, stay right there, stay right there. Sit, sit, sit. Good boy, good boy. Good boy, you're such a cutie. All right, so... I, let me turn the ISO down to 400 because that's normal for a lot of people. Um, so this is ISO 400, 140th of a second shutter speed, 24 frames a second, f1.4. Should have been saying all that before. So apply that knowledge to the previous light test and you will know. All right, um, I think uh, the next test is going to be a nighttime test. So I'm going to wait until it's nighttime, and I'm going to show you guys how it performs in the low light. He's bored. All right, this is one more test here. Uh, this is me holding my camera out at arm's length. Um, as you can see, you can actually get my face, which is good. You can't get that with a lot of other uh, longer lenses, but uh, it still probably doesn't make a very good vlog lens. Um, I'm winging the focus, so hopefully that works. But... Um, this is what it makes somebody's face look like. I don't know what else to tell you. Hopefully there's a lot of uh, depth of field, uh, shallow depth of field for you to enjoy right here. The sun has gone down even more and we're still doing good in a low light situation. Uh, for reference, I'm in my room right now. The windows are, are drawn. The sun is just still barely up right now. And uh, for reference, you know, you can usually tell how light or dark it is by how much uh, your light bulb in the room makes a difference to the light, you know, when it's, you know, 12 noon and you got the windows open, the light bulb doesn't make a ton of difference. Um, but right now you can see that it makes a huge difference. So that, that should tell you that if the one little tiny uh, uh, light is that bright in the room, then the sun is really low. And yet we can still see at ISO 800 uh, with very little noise because 800 is pretty good, at least for YouTube, right? So... I'm gonna turn on the room light. 
with just the room light on, it gets a lot better. And um, so as far as the distance, let's see, this is usually where I record cover songs, or sometimes I like to talk in front of my computer. Um, I have a small room, it's just, you know, this is like a full-size bed. I was going to go twin, but then I ever wanted to have sex again for the rest of my life, so I kept the full instead of going back down to twin. And um, <laughs> so here's, you know, the desk, and I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe eight feet or something like that. Um, because if I put my feet right there and my head right there, probably, somewhere around there, so... It's, you know, a small room, but it's wide enough to where I can just stand up against the wall right here and get almost my whole body in that chair so I could play guitar and stuff. So that should help you get an idea of how wide it is, I guess. One more quick test. This is dusk. The sun has literally gone down already, and yet uh, I'm at ISO 200 only, and I can still see this clearly. Uh, it, it's this bright at ISO 200, f1.4, a 40th of a second, and the sun is totally down. And we're gonna do a low light test next. All right, we're doing a, a pitch black nighttime test. It is, well, it's, we're in the city, so it's not pitch black, but the sun has gone down a long time ago. It's 8 p.m. right now, <laughs> and right now it's during that uh, daylight savings time or not or whatever where the sun goes down pretty early, so. This is running at a 48th of a second shutter speed and f-stop 1.4, of course. And I think I can clearly see everything. The histogram basically shows me that, you know, it's dark over here in the dark spots, but basically this is, this is a good amount of light. And I'm only at ISO 800. And like I was saying before, you know, ISO 800, it's not the best, but um, it's kind of acceptable for YouTube. Your, uh, your film starts to look shitty at uh, ISO 1600 and above, right? So 800 is pretty awesome. I mean, look at this. Pretty freaking cool. So, this is nighttime test footage. Nighttime test footage. There's a Jeep. There's a light. <laughs> All right, as long as we're here picking up uh, some pizza, we're in the parking lot of a mall and it's pitch black as it was before and we're just at ISO 800 and 40th of a second shutter speed f1.4 and this is the quality it looks pretty good 800 is pretty nice to have ISO 800 I'm always at 16 or 3200 on my other lenses well maybe not the uh, f1.8 but you know what I'm saying pretty good and while we're here, at a little light, uh, here's a test of the bokeh, or the bokeh, or whatever. I'm gonna defocus all the way. Look how freaking cool that is. Whoa. It keeps going! That's huge. And I forgot what they said, but it was like five blades or six blades or something like, it just looks beautiful. But that's pretty good bokeh. Okay, go ahead and make your left turn. No, you're waiting. Haha, <laughs> I ruined it for you. <laughs> Bokeh was worth it. Look at how, look at how cool it is. Yeah. And now we're gonna do another test for the uh, depth of field so that you can just tell. I'm focusing on the lamp in the background, and I'm gonna, f I'm gonna switch focus to the Coke glass right in front of me. So look at that depth of field. It's now 10 p.m. at night. It's dark as F. I'm using ISO 1600 only, and you can see this kitty who shows up at our house every once in a while to try and beg for a treat or a snack. But then it's like I gave him so many free treats, and then I come forward, and then he runs away because he thinks we're not friends. Freaking jerk. Anyway, so this is what the camera does at nighttime. We are only at ISO 1600. Look how cool that is only 1600 and we're in pitch black this is the only light right now this freaking street light right here 1600 is enough to do it that is awesome very cool one last test uh, this is daytime again it's about 3 p.m. today has no clouds it's a very sunny day um, 
this is California. It's not exactly the equator, but it's pretty bright here. Um, and we're in the backyard, and I just wanted to show you how bright things can get if you were hoping to get your uh, F1.4 happening. Um, I have to have this camera all the way down to F9.9 for it to even be exposed properly at 3 p.m. So if you're going to have this camera, you need a neutral density filter like I was saying before. Um, we're at uh, a 48th of a second shutter speed, um, 24 frames a second, ISO all the way down to 100. And this is just, you know, somewhat normally exposed. So uh, for reference, if I turned it all the way up to f1.4 again look at how white it gets just like i was saying last time you can't see anything so i'm gonna go grab an nd filter that doesn't exactly match this lens but uh, it might help to show you a little bit uh about that hold on okay here we are again um i am just realizing that the the nd filter that i was supposed to get for this is not going to be strong enough because right now i have an nd filter for a different camera, it doesn't fit this one, or lens, it doesn't fit this lens. It's a .9, it's one of those Tiffin .9s, so it's supposed to do three stops, I guess, and when I put it over the camera, it only helps me expose it to f5.6, which is not nearly enough, uh, you know, for me to get over to 1.4, so I'm thinking, I need something way stronger, if I ever hope to get to 1.4. Oh wait, I'm going to do two filters on top of each other. Hold on. Alright, back with my filters. I just wanted to show them to you before I put them close to the camera. Uh, these are both .9s, so I guess that's something like like six f-stops or something. Full stops, which would be uh, 18 turns of the wheel. I don't even know. Go look it up. But <laughs> basically two .9 filters. Um, I'm going to put them over. Hold on. All right, there we go. I think I might have been out of focus before. So yeah, I've got both filters. So I've got an effective 1.8 filter, I guess, because um, they're both 0.9s, uh, Tiffin. And I am at f1.4 right now. But the histogram on my little display is showing me that I am slightly overexposed. And I'm still down to ISO 100. So I would think that, you know, because I guess a somewhat safe range for YouTube stuff is between, you know, 100 ISO. Oh, here comes, here comes the guy with the freaking buzz dog again. Uh, between ISO um, 100 and 800, right? 400 optimal. Uh, so if I'm down to 100 right now, then if I'm slightly overexposed at a 0.9 times 2, which would be 1.8, then I don't know. I'm guessing <laughs> three of these might be good. Uh, or maybe more. Who knows? So, so whatever you do, try to find <laughs> an ND filter that matches, you know, Sort of what I'm saying here, although no guarantees on any information provided. You're on your own, even if you kill yourself and die. Um, so yeah, I guess that's the end of my little review. This is daytime, and then one time for reference, one more time, boom, no filters. 1.4, ISO 100. Worst thing ever. I guess if you're shooting slow motion, though, let's see. Let's do slow motion. Okay, this is not slow motion, but this is uh, 60 frames a second, which uh, some people in their music videos <laughs> and stuff will slow down to 250%. Uh, um, uh, so it's like, you know, 2.5 slow motion, and um, that effectively makes you have to use a shutter speed of, tw of double what you're doing before. So I was doing 1 48th of a second shutter speed before, and now I'm doing like 1 130th. So that effectively cuts the light in half, and now it kind of looks normally exposed, wouldn't you say? So I've got the two filters on still, and I'm, I'm on half the light. So actually, this kind of tells me that um, it might be a good idea to get a minimum of 3.6. And this is 3 in the afternoon, so if you're going to film at you know, 12 in the afternoon, you might need more. So 3.6 is for 3 in the afternoon. So get a 5, maybe. I don't know. And then... Just have the ISO at 200 sometimes. Who knows? All right, I think I'm done with the outside tests. Actually, I have one more trick up my sleeve. I just want to try this right now. Um, I am not using a neutral density filter at all. I am still at f1.4, but I've changed my shutter speed. Oh, and I'm still at ISO 100. I've changed my shutter speed to 1 1,000th one of a second. And this is a no-no in, I guess, filmmaking because you're supposed to have 
the uh, exposure going on for half the time and not going on for half the time, which is what some people call a 180 degree thing, I guess, a, ro ro a rotation angle of 180 degrees. Um, which means, you know, like if you're at 1 24th of a second shutter speed, then uh, you want to do, I guess, a 40th of a second exposure, which is half of 1 24th. So that means half on, half off. And that's what the movies use, I guess, or something like that. So 1 1,000th is not good because, as you might be able to tell right now, there's no motion blur whatsoever. It's really crappy. So, you know, that's good for, I guess, like fight scenes or whatever, but... Um, not good for a normal movie, but I just remembered that some software that I have can add fake motion blur. And so I just thought to myself, well, maybe I'll add it in post and see what happens. So I'm gonna do a quick, quick uh, couple of pans maybe. All right, I'm gonna stand here, I'm gonna do a couple of pans and starting right about now, I'm gonna have the uh, motion blur added artificially in the software. So you tell me if it looks good enough. If you think it does, then maybe you can get away without a neutral density filter. All right, here we go. Okay. And so then let's try my hand in front. Oops. Hold on, let me focus. How about that. Nope. Oh, you can't really even do this because it's so close. The focus is so imprecise. Maybe I can get my dog to run around. Freddy! Come here, bud. Freddy! Come here. Hey, want a treat? Come here. No? What's your problem? What's your problem, you silly dog? You want a treat or what? If you want a treat, you have to be a good boy. Want a treat? Hello? Do you not want a treat? You just had two, maybe that's why. <laughs> Alright, well, maybe you guys can figure something out from what you're seeing here. I know this is not high action, but, you know. Stuff is moving around, at least. So yeah, I guess that's actually it this time. Well, you dudes, I hope you found that review helpful and entertaining. Um, I tried to include everything in it that uh, I, I could think of uh, that I would use, you know, mostly for video stuff. Um, so yeah, keep in mind for photos, you don't really, I don't think you need the neutral density filters because you can just set a really, really fast shutter speed unless you plan on uh, doing something that requires motion blur like um, the street at night and, and you know cars driving by and you want to smear their lights or like a waterfall uh, and you want it to smear and look you know misty you know something like that so um, uh, if you if you found this uh, video helpful uh, or entertaining and or entertaining then please subscribe uh, I do vlogs here at this channel and um, you get to watch me act silly like a doofus and uh, have fun and do different things with music and whatever um, also, I have other channels, so uh, look in the description of this video for all the links to my other channels. I do music, I play video games, I do cover songs every once in a while. Um, and then I post up videos of myself performing live at um, venues. And you'll see a lot of my little doggy, Freddy. Hi, sweetheart, what are you doing? What do you want? Punk? Oh, it's fetch time, is it? Okay, hold on. Boom! Left-handed. <laughs> left hand is not very good. Um, so, yeah. I'll see you guys at a later date and time. Um, share, subscribe, tell your friends, and um, don't get diarrhea, dudes. Freddy!